So it's electrical day on the fireplace project. You might be asking, electrical in a fireplace? We're adding some lighting. We've got two different systems. We've got 12 volt lighting system. And then we're adding some outlets to the back. So when people have, you know, crock pots and those types of things on those counters that uh, require electricity, we have access to in the back. So come along, let's see what we've got planned. So here in the center of each firewood box, we're gonna add one of these. It's a little four LED. Um, it's designed for landscaping, but we're gonna tuck it up under here and then lay the stone around it. So it'll provide some downlight into this area. What we found working out here at night is that this end get, actually gets pretty dark. So we're gonna try to get this, um, this set up to add a little, a little bit of light. Um, and we think it would be, you know, add some visual touches to the, the fireplace as a whole. We got the ring transformer installed and it's able to connect back to the bridge in the house. And when I wired these outlets up, I wired them just on basically extension cords. So we can leave them unplugged until we need them and then we can plug them in. I didn't have a good way of getting into the boxes that were here to make the junction in kind of a, a safe way. So we'll just leave them as extension cords. We can leave them unplugged. We'll have access to this little compartment once this is all done. But the outlets work. And the transformer works and the lights that we have hooked up so far turn on. So generally speaking, from an electrical standpoint, a success. Morning, everybody. We're getting ready to put the mantle up. So if you remember from an earlier video, we put a bunch of backer board behind here. There's two two by sixes. So essentially everything right here is solid wood and anchored into this structure. So we have two pieces of angle iron. One will sit on each end. We're going we're gonna to bolt that to the wall through the cement board into that backer so that the mantle that we have can just sit on top. We sh we're gonna be able to cover this then with stone. We'll lay right up and above it, thanks to uh, the scratch coat and some other options that we have. So we gotta get some holes drilled. We already got the other one in as a reference. So we gotta get some holes drilled in this so that we can get the bolts in so that we have something to set the mantle on.
now. So we're gonna put a fresh chainsaw blade on so we can cut this farm beam as accurately as possible. So we got a little, uh, let's see, it's a steel mini boss. Had this chainsaw for a long, long time. Uh, abused the heck out of it. We've used it for a ton of stuff. Um, generally, I like, I don't cut giant trees down on a regular basis. So mm -hmm. I like chainsaw blades that have a shorter bar. For me, they're easier to control, they're easier to use, um, and they're just not as unruly as some of those giant, much longer bars. So we're gonna put a fresh blade on, and um, I had to think about which way was the right way to go. And um, we're gonna get cutting this beam to the right length. It has started raining, so we're not sure we'll be able to get it in today, because I don't want to get the barn beam itself wet, because it's lived how many years of its life not being wet, so we don't want to mess anything up. So we'll see what we can do. So we're using the chainsaw. We got to cut down here. This end we're not going to use. We're going to use just this center section so those notches are centered. There, we can try down here first. Big drill bit, really big hole. We have these low voltage recessed lights that are gonna go in there. Shine down onto the hearth and provide a little ambiance. these can lights that we bought, I don't know how you're supposed to anchor them in the recesses. So what we did is we drilled a three inch hole, which is what sits on this lip. And then there's a hole out the back for the wire to come through, but it needs something cushy to kind of hold that, hold that in there. So we had a little bit of this, it's solar cover from a swimming pool. And all I'm doing is I cut a little strip and I'm just wrapping it around the light to provide a little bit of a centering cushion. These 12 volt lights should not get hot, so I'm not worried about that, but it gives something just to hold it in place so when they're hanging upside down, they don't fall out. But if we need to get to them, we can pop them out if we need to. get any good video of us actually anchoring the barn beam to the fireplace. The process we used was to run lag screws from the back side of the wall through the backer board and into the barn beam. I hung on it, I sat on it, 
I can assure you that barn beam is not going anywhere. The photo you see here is how the electrical system ended up. I do want to take a minute to tell everyone I am not an electrician. I read a lot, I watched a lot of videos, a lot of how-tos, and I wired it the best way I knew how, but I would not take anything you saw in this video as electrical advice. It's so now the fun stuff. It's TV time and soundbar. So what we've done up there is if you see that board, that is solid wood behind there, right below the outlet. Plenty of things to anchor to. We have four lag bolts in there, more than enough strength to hold this TV. This is just a standard internal TV. I know a bunch of you are gonna say it's outside, the weather, the moisture, the humidity, the temperatures will damage it. And it might. But we priced outdoor televisions of this size and they were literally 10 times more expensive than this television. So I can replace a lot of TVs for that price difference. So we're gonna hang this up, get the brackets on the, get the, brackets on the back quick, hang this up there. Um, we are beaming Wi-Fi from the house, so this is a smart TV, so we ought to be able to pick up all of our, our apps and our uh, various ways we like to watch television. So the kids are excited, I'm excited, let's get that hung up on the wall. stone done and the TV hung, it was time to sit back and relax and enjoy a show and a fire at the freshly completed fireplace. Thank you to everyone for coming along on this journey. I hope you found it useful. As we look forward to what's next on the channel, it's time to get into camping season. We are avid RVers and love to travel the country as much as possible. Obviously 2020 made that a little bit difficult but we're looking forward to 2021 and the possibility of new adventures as we travel the country. Come along with us.